Mike Pence. Thank you, Karen, and Charlotte, and thank all of you. On behalf of President Donald Trump, my wife Karen, our daughter Charlotte, I'd like to welcome you all to Washington, D.C. for the 44th Annual March for Life. It's a good day, and it's the best day I've ever seen for the March of Life in more ways than one. I'm deeply humbled to stand before you today, deeply humbled to be the first Vice President of the United States to ever have the privilege to attend this historic gathering. More than 240 years ago, our founders wrote words that have echoed through the ages. They declared these truths to be self-evident, that we are, all of us, endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Forty-four years ago, our Supreme Court turned away from the first of these timeless ideals. But today, three generations hence, because of all of you and the many thousands who stand with us in marches like this all across the nation, life is winning again in America. That is evident in the election of pro-life majorities in the Congress of the United States of America. But it is no more evident in any way than in the historic election of a president who stands for a stronger America a more prosperous America, and a president who I proudly say stands for the right to life, President Donald Trump. <laughs> president Trump actually asked me to be here with you today. He asked me to thank you for your support for your stand for life and for your compassion for the women and children of America. One week ago today, on the steps of the Capitol, we saw the inauguration of the 45th President of the United States. And I can tell you firsthand, our president is a man with broad shoulders and a big heart. His vision, his energy, his optimism are boundless, and I know he will make America great again. From his first day in office, he's been keeping his promises to the American people. I like to say over there at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, we're in the promise-keeping business. That's why on Monday, President Trump reinstated the Mexico City policy to prevent foreign aid from funding organizations that promote or perform abortions worldwide. That's why this administration 
will work with the Congress to end taxpayer funding of abortion and abortion providers. And we will devote those resources to health care services for women across America. And that's why next week, President Donald Trump will announce a Supreme Court nominee who will uphold the God-given liberties enshrined in our Constitution in the tradition of the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia. You know, life is winning in America. And today is a celebration of that progress, the progress that we've made in this cause. You know, I've long believed that a society can be judged by how we care for our most vulnerable, the aged, the infirm, the disabled, and the unborn. We've come to a historic moment in the cause of life, and we must meet this moment with respect and compassion for every American. Life is winning in America for many reasons. Life is winning through the steady advance of science that illuminates when life begins more and more every day. Life is winning through the generosity of millions of adoptive families who open their hearts and homes to children in need. Life is winning through the compassion of caregivers and volunteers at crisis pregnancy centers and faith-based organizations who minister to women in the cities and towns across this country. And life is winning through the quiet councils between mothers and daughters, grandmothers and granddaughters, between friends across kitchen tables and over coffee at college campuses. The truth is being told. Compassion is overcoming convenience, and hope is defeating despair. In a word, Life is winning in America because of all of you. So I urge you to press on. But as it is written, let your gentleness be evident to all. Let this movement be known for love, not anger. Let this movement be known for compassion, not confrontation. When it comes to matters of the heart, there is nothing stronger than gentleness. I believe we will continue to win the hearts and minds of the rising generation if our hearts first break for young mothers and their unborn children, and if we, each of us, do all we can to meet them where they are with generosity, not judgment. <laughs> to heal our land and restore a culture of lies, we must continue to be a movement that embraces all, cares for all, and shows respect for the dignity and worth of every person. Enshrined on the walls of the Jefferson Memorial are the words of our third president, who admonished us so long ago to remember that God, who gave us life, gave us liberty. On behalf of the President of the United States and my little family, we thank you for your stand for life. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your love for the women and children of America. And be assured, be assured, along with you, we will not grow weary. We will not rest 
until we restore a culture of life in America for ourselves and our posterity. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.